Hi, my name is Chris Sobola. I'm here in Santa Dominica, Talao, with my friend Bonnie Gale Oliver, who moved here. And I thought it would be really fun to do an interview with Bonnie because she's been through a lot. She's uh, she's figured it all out, and I thought you might want to know some things. All right. So, Bonnie, how long have you been here in Santa Dominica? When did you move? We moved in uh, late March of, of 2018. So at this time, we've been here about um, almost five months. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. What is it like living here? Well, it's wonderful. It had been a, a lifelong dream to retire in Italy and to be able to actually do this. Is um, I'm a little surprised that, that I went ahead and took the leap and did it. But um, the Italian people are so wonderful. They are so loving and compassionate and, and generous. And they have welcomed, welcomed us into the community right from the start. And, and I think that's really what gives me the most pleasure is the fact that we've made, so, in this short period of time, some really nice friendships. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. We found the same thing, too, that mm -hmm. um, especially in this village, there's always a helping hand. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's always, is everything okay? Mm -hmm. You know, what do you need? Well, we will help you. And it's it's a community. It's unlike anything I've ever found. It is. Yeah. We've, um, we found that we had transportation issues when we first got here. We couldn't have a car, couldn't buy a car. Mm -hmm. And it was, was so easy to just get someone in the village if they were going down to the little town of Scalaya, mm -hmm. which is, is not that far. It's made, what, five, eight kilometers? Five or eight kilometers from yeah. here. And we would hitch a ride with people, and they were very welcoming. You know, they're like, yeah, we're going to Scalia, you're welcome to join us. And uh, so, it, you know, it was just, I was amazed at the generosity of people, that they were willing to step up and help you out. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I remember you said something about when, when Ollie, your, um, your sister's dog, Caroline's right. dog, mm -hmm. got ill, and it was a Sunday, and you were up in the piazza, and you asked somebody what about a vet, and then everybody came out and they were all on their phones trying to find a vet. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. That was really it was, interesting. Yeah, it was really wonderful because um, at one point there were about eight people on their phones. They were they were talking amongst themselves in Italian, but they were trying to help make arrangements for to to see what vet might be open and how we would get to the vet because the Sunday the buses don't run. Mm -hmm. And there was a gentleman down in the piazza with his pit bull. So there was, I laughed and said there were eight people in a pit bull <laughs> down, down there trying to help us figure out a way. And, and it, it was a unique experience because what turned up uh, happening was the vet, there was a, a bike race in Scalia, mm -hmm. and even though we had transportation to go to Scalia, we couldn't get to the vet's office because mm -hmm. the roads were closed. Oh my goodness. So the vet did a house call. Wow. She drove up to, to uh, Santa Domenica from Scalia and saw Ali in our apartment and came with a medical bag and, and medication and treated her. And then the next day we got down to, to uh, Scalia to the vet's office. But, uh, but we had a house call for a, for a pet. Wow, from a vet. That's and, amazing. Mm -hmm, yeah. That's amazing. And Ali, I understand, is doing well now. She right? is. Yeah, yeah she's doing really well. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's great. We walk all the time. I get up at. I walk her every day between six and seven. Uh, we'll start and we walk for a full hour every day. Wow. There's a little dog down in the village who had joins us now. Oh, was that Jasmine? <laughs> Jasmine, Jasmine. <laughs> she yeah. she comes along with us. Yeah. yeah. So she's adorable. Yeah. Does anybody own Jasmine? Or she, she does. does. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She has an owner. Yeah. I always see her, and I, she always looks like she wants to come home with us. So yeah. I, she. Yeah. That's that's her nature. Yes. <laughs> okay. Good. Now the um, when you walk. I, I don't know if everybody that we're talking to has seen all the little vias and little staircases. It's like Hogwarts. In fact, um, we got lost trying to find you today. Uh -huh. And uh, luckily, we, <laughs> Rosaria heard English and she comes down and we, we thought we were up here. And suddenly she's above us. What are you doing? We're like, we're looking for you guys. And she's like, oh yeah, and she's laughing. So. Um, have you figured out where everything is? I mean, to me, they, it changes and moves like Hogwarts. It was a process. Mm -hmm. We've been here long enough now and walk in the alleys almost every day. 
you you do start to learn landmarks and directions, but it's 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 a challenge. And we always say it reminds us of some of the scenes in the old town in Game of Thrones. Yeah. Because the the architecture is just so ancient, and the alleyways are so small, and they twist and they turn and they're up and down. Yeah. And uh, so we've always been amused, and I'm always taking pictures because you you you'll just stumble up on something that you've never seen before, like a beautiful bougainvillea vine or something, climbing up this, this old wall. And it just kind of takes your breath away that there's, there's always something new to discover. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed that too. All the times that we've been here, you turn and you see something amazing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, that's fabulous. I love that. Good, okay. Um, so tell me about the first time you thought about moving to Italy. You said it was a long dream of yours. Mm -hmm. When was that first time that you thought, you know, I, I think I might like to look into this? Well, I think it was back in my 20s. Mm -hmm. And I was yearning to visit Europe and travel through Europe and really get to see, see some sights. But my, I was a registered nurse and we never got that much time off. Mm -hmm. um, you know, consecutive time to really do major travel. Right. And so I kept putting it off and putting it off. And uh, But back in my 20s, I started thinking, you know, one day I'm going to get to European continent and I want to travel. And I'm going to see if maybe if I retire would be the time to do that and buy a home and have a, have a, a base of operations, so mm -hmm. to speak, and get to see all the sites that, that Europe has to offer and to meet the people. Mm -hmm. Because Living here these few months, we've met a real international community. Yeah. Not just the Italians, but they're Irish, uh, British, um, um, Norwegian, uh, you know, just all different countries. Mm -hmm. and, and it's amazing how many people are fluent in English. Yeah. And that we can sit down and have a conversation with. And uh, so, but that had always been a dream of mine to, to do that. And... Uh, I um, was just waiting for retirement to sort of make that happen, and I've worked a number of years with that idea in mind, so financially, you know, trying to save to that, to make that happen and, and arrange things, but, um, but it was just the last couple of years, it really sort of solidified for me, and I really started thinking about making it happen. Mm -hmm. Wow. And what was it that made you choose Santa Domenica? I mean, it's a magical place, but honestly, probably not a lot of people know it's here. Right. And, right. and somehow you knew to come here. So what happened with that? Well, there's a, a television show on HGTV, House Hunters International. Yeah. And I watched an episode, and any time they had an Italian episode, I was, was sure to see it. And... Um, and uh, there was a woman who looked at property in Scalia and in Santa Domenica. Uh -huh. And I thought that sounded interesting. And also I had done a little research, and I know that southern Italy is much more affordable than, than northern Italy as far as buying into real estate. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I contacted the realtor who did the show with um, House Hunters International and booked a viewing trip. Mm -hmm to come. Okay. So my niece, this was about three years ago, my niece came with me and we looked at properties and uh, it didn't work out on that trip, but I, but I went home and still sort of kept the dream alive. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's great. Yeah. That's a similar thing that happened with us. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a whole different story, but I know the episode you're talking about with with Michelle, Michelle. She's here, mm -hmm. and a uh, lovely gal, by the way. Yes, her. she is. And she's been very generous with advice and everything for us, mm -hmm. um, and she has a lovely place. So, yeah, that was that was the one that kind of made me start looking in Santa Dominica as well. So we should give mad kudos to Michelle for yes. doing this both Yes, yes. And it was a real treat when I got to meet her yeah. uh, a few weeks ago. I, I got to meet her. Yeah. And she is a lovely lady. She yeah. is. She yeah. is. We love her. Good. Okay. All right, so um, we may have touched on this one, but what was it that made you decide to make the move? I mean, you have a dream, it's cooking along, and then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. there's a decision. Yeah. Or maybe not all of a sudden. What happened with that? Well, I, um, I just decided I wanted to persevere. I, this was something that I had thought of for so long, 
and I'm not getting any younger. Mm -hmm. And I'd had I'd had some illness. I'd had some some major back surgeries, mm -hmm. and that that had sort of laid me up for a while. Mm -hmm. And um, once I recovered and was feeling much better, I just kept thinking. Um, you know, I really need to investigate Italy more and see if I can make this happen. So I, um, and then I had taken care of my mother. My mother had been very ill and, and eventually passed away, but I had nursed her while she was sick. And at the one year anniversary of her death, I decided to do something fun. And I said, I'm not going to sit around the house and mope. Uh, so I booked another trip to Italy. And I was here for the one year anniversary of, of her death. And, um, and I had, at that point, I didn't plan to really look for apartments, but when I was on the train coming, coming in from Rome, the, um, I ended up sitting next to a Russian realtor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. cool. karma came in. And yeah. Helped yeah. You <laughs> okay. Right. And, uh, and so he sort of talked to me about, well, I've got a place in Scalia I'll show you. And right. so I thought, well, it doesn't cost to look. So, but then the bed and breakfast where I was staying, um, Clive um, and Catherine Baton were wonderful, and and they had a friend that they knew who had this place in Santa Domenica mm -hmm. that he wanted to sell, and uh, so Clive encouraged me. He said, "You really need to come and look at this particular residence." Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting because I had the couple who owned this place had a blog for years, mm -hmm. and I followed their blog, and never dreamed that I would end up one day buying their apartment. Yeah. And um, so, but um, once I looked at this apartment, I thought, I think this is doable. Yeah, yeah. So I just talked to Clive and went home and started the process. I got a power of attorney here and mm -hmm. started the process, and I actually bought the apartment through a proxy power of attorney. I did. I wasn't even here when I bought the apartment. I was back in the states. Wow. But the deal, the deal was closed. The real estate closing took place without me being present. Wow! I didn't know that was possible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. And it went pretty quickly, didn't it? Because I remember we were here. We looked at it with another friend mm -hmm. who unfortunately had leg issues, but that worked out great because now we have you, which is <laughs> awesome. Um, and, and then shortly after, Clive said, um, oh, Bonnie's going to get it and move in. And then it seemed like that you were there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. what was the process? Tell us, walk us through the process of buying a place in Italy. How does that roll out? Well, you, there, you have to have a Codis Fiscale, which mm -hmm. is a, a tax ID. Yeah. And I managed to get that on my first trip here. Oh, good. Uh, and it's just a matter of going and filling out some paperwork and paying a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I went and met with uh, the notary mm -hmm. and, um, and arranged to have a translator because if you don't speak the language, the law requires that you have to have an interpreter on your behalf mm -hmm. for a real estate transaction. Yeah. So I, I hired a, um, a translator and then it was just a matter of sending the money. And it's kind of, kind of odd. You, 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 um, wire the money over and then the notary meets with the seller who has power of attorney and, and my power of attorney and they do the deal and it didn't take all that long once once we we decided to go ahead and do it it didn't take all that long wow wow that's great mm -hmm. that's actually pretty simple when you think about it compared to you know the paid what you get a book like in california you say, sign here sign here sign here's all these disclosures and you're mm -hmm. just like oh by the right. time you're done so right. that's good to know well what i have learned is that it's easier to buy property than it is to get um the uh, residency status to allow you to live here uh, so they'll quickly sell you a property yeah. but there's no guarantee they're gonna let you stay walk us through that process a little bit we had talked when the camera was off a little bit about how do you get a residency status, visas, and that sort of thing. Tell us a little bit about that process, what's required, things that people, if somebody wants to do this, they need to know. Right. Well, my advice would be to really research what you, what you need to know. You have to be prepared mm -hmm. because uh, luckily my sister Carolyn Oliver was really on top of this, and she read every blog and and really tried to get all the details, but um, you can come to Italy and don't need a visa, and you can stay for three months. Right. 
but beyond three months, you really you have you apply for a visa through the Italian consulate. In the states, in the states, okay. And depending on which region you live in the U.S., there are diff different consulates that that you that you have to apply to. I see. Okay. There's one in San Francisco, for example, mm -hmm. and then there's one in Miami that served our area where we were living in Mississippi. And um, but there's lots and lots of paperwork, and you have to have financial disclosures. Mm -hmm. You have to sh show that you're solvent, that you um, will be able to come to Italy and support yourself. Right. Okay. So they're very, very clear on that. So there is a, um, we did learn that there was a, uh, you have to have a maximum income. Even though you're retired, they want to see income. It doesn't matter how much savings or 401k or property you have. Uh, the, the, they want to see it structured as income. And how would you structure, structure that as income? I mean, if you have you know, 401ks where you want to retire here. Right. Is there some sort of loophole or some sort of different way of, of mm -hmm. doing it? Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of people retire, they don't really have income. That's a good question, mm -hmm. right. Um, well, your Social Security or, or any private pension fund that you have that, that you get a monthly um, income from is you just have to have documentation that that's, that's uh, you know the amount, mm -hmm. and you show that in the way of bank statements. Okay. Uh, like three months of banks, they wanted three, three months, months yeah. of bank statements okay, good to, to show that consistent income from those sources, mm -hmm. and you can take uh, your uh, retirement fund or four hundred one k and structure it so you start withdrawing so much a month mm -hmm. if that's what you need to do, or if you're going to rent your home. Um, when you leave the states, that would, would serve as, as income. Ah, okay. So you can show a lease, that you have a lease with someone, and that this is how much they pay on a monthly basis. Is it a, a year lease? Is it a five-year lease? Mm -hmm. And that, that would count as income as well. Okay, that makes sense. Now, what if, I, don't, I have no idea whether this would even be a good idea, but what about an annuity? Would you possibly buy sure. an annuity and then have it pay yes. you? Yes. That could be a way around it, too. If it makes exactly, it yes. Sense. That was something that was that was um, discussed and recommended to us. But, ah, okay. Yeah, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great to know. Mm -hmm. Thank you for telling so us. So you just have to sort of move money around mm -hmm. so that it shows as income. Yeah, okay. That, that should be simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, good. All right. Um, how did the process of moving go? I mean, it was a thing. You decided, you bought, and then you had to handle your life. So tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. Well, that was that was really stressful. That was really difficult um, because we were faced with trying to get all this paperwork together, and at the same time, we were trying to sort of dismantle the life we had mm -hmm. and get rid of belongings and, and, and decide what we were going to keep and bring with us and um, and dealing with the Italian embassy at, at that point. You know, there was so much paperwork and uh, that we had to, to, to get together and meetings we did with the, uh, one uh, honorary member of the Italian consulate. Mm -hmm. But um, then um, we just Booked, booked a plane ticket. We finally were able to, to you know, decide that we were just going to go ahead and set a date that, to move. And we started packing like mad. And we came with, I think, it, I think my sister had five or six big suitcases, and I came with 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 three. And you know, you pack for all, all the clothes you're going to need, and, and you need some household gear, yeah. like linens, bed, you need to bring, it's helpful to bring your own bedding and linens in some respects, but um, it was um, it was a really stressful, about six months, it wow. really was, wow. because there was, we, we worked on this nonstop, yeah. we really did, to get it at selling, selling our cars, mm -hmm. um, um, so it, it was, it's a process, but we made lots of lists, and we just would just check things off the list as as we move forward and uh, and selling furniture and things like that and then arranging with the moving company. Mm -hmm. We are moving some things, mm -hmm. so we had to find out that process and decide who was a good moving company. You know, you have to be very careful about who you hire, yeah. and uh, this that's still a process. And that we have someone who's going to go and meet the moving company. I, the things we're bringing is still in our home in uh, Mississippi, 
and the moving company is going to come soon within the next couple of weeks and we have to have a family member meet them and they're going to pack up the things that we're actually having shipped over. Oh wow, okay, so, so there's, it's still going yeah. on then. Yeah, That's and of course process. we moved a lot of animals. Yes, tell yeah. us about that because I've, I've thought about that with my little dog. Yeah, yeah. Okay. well we moved to, they're, they're yours for life and yes. my sister and I do did some rescue work, yeah. animal rescue and we, we ended up between us, I had three cats and she had two cats and a dog <laughs> and we were determined that they were coming with us. Yeah. But it's nice because Italy does not have a quarantine law. Oh, nice. So you're allowed to bring them over, but there's a lot of paperwork. You end up having to get documents from the U.S. FDA um, to, to certify your pet that's been vaccinated, and they have microchips and, um, and all such as that, and you have to work with your vet. Mm -hmm. and, um, but, and we ended up hiring a company to help us move them because we were so concerned about their safety. Yeah. Um, that we wanted to make sure that they were, were not going to get left on a tarmac somewhere and that we had someone helping us every step of the way. And, um, but it all worked out great. There was one cat that came with us in, on the plane because she had such anxiety. I was able to bring her over in a carrier, but the others were shipped by cargo. But we dropped them off in Atlanta mm -hmm. and um, to a company there, and they, they got all their paperwork together, and then they put them on a plane to um, Germany. Mm -hmm. And then in Germany, they had a bit of a respite. Mm -hmm. they, um, there's a facility there, uh, Lufthansa has a facility where they, um, they ship Olympic animals, zoo animals, all, you know, all the time, and they have a facility where the animals can go and be... Um, um, checked out by vet again, and and uh, given um, time out of the crate, yeah, yeah. and you know just sort of relax overnight. Mm -hmm. Then they ship, then they flew them to Rome, and they have someone meet them in, at the at the Rome um, uh, cargo terminal for pets, mm -hmm. and then they put them on on a truck and drove them from Rome to Santa Domenica. Wow, so, wow, that's really good to know. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So. Good. And the company, uh, I, I guess I'm going to do an endorsement, Jetapet was the name of the company we Jet used, Jetapet. Okay. And they were very good, and, okay. and we were real pleased. We got updates, because the animals didn't arrive until two or three days after us. Yeah, yeah. So, so you they track they gave, them. They, yeah, we were able to track them, their progress, yeah. Wow, yeah. that's great. So, and then it was funny, because when they, they came... They arrived in the evening up in the piazza, and in the piazza, it's it's a whirlwind of activity in the piazza at night. And all these people were get up, gathered there as they do every night. And this truck drove up, and they started unloading all these, these five crates of animals. And people gathered around, and they were kind of curious, and were asking us questions about, are all those yours? <laughs> so they got the village got a kick out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's awesome. Excellent. Okay. All right, so um, what unexpected things did you run into here? I didn't expect that the language barrier was going to be so frustrating for me. Mm -hmm. um, we studied Italian before we came, but it doesn't really prepare you to sort of drop in and, and be fluent enough in, in the language. Right. And... Um, there's this real desire to talk to people and get to know them, and, and it gets a little frustrating. It gets frustrating for the Italians, mm -hmm. and it gets frustrating for us. Yeah. So because there's a lot of energy that goes into into trying to communicate, mm -hmm. but we've learned a lot of uh, through you know body language you can communicate a lot, and with between some broken English and broken Italian that we have, mm -hmm. and Google Translator is yeah. wonderful. We love it. Yeah, um, you know we we get by, but our neighbors have even you know they've really stressed to us. You really need to learn the language, and of course we know that. Yeah. So. Yeah. But now that we have a residency status, we'll be able to enroll in uh, Italian lessons at the public school in the evening, oh. and it's free. You can you can you can go and learn Italian for free. So we're still studying with some of the, the apps that we have mm -hmm. to study Italian, but um, we're we're going to dedicate ourselves to to studying in a formal setting. That's fantastic. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had a similar uh, situation when I lived in Brussels. You know dropped into a, a Catholic school there 
when I was 17 years old. I didn't speak a word of French, you know. And the first few months, I will tell you, uh, were very unhappy months because mm -hmm. communication is like so dear to mm -hmm. all of us, right? Yeah. Um, but after about three months, things started to fall in place, especially I did do classes in the evening. Um, and then uh, I would buy magazines in French and mm -hmm. take my French dictionary and just read and look up words. Mm -hmm. And after about three months, I started yapping. And, I mean, I still didn't get the tenses quite right because who knows, <laughs> right? <laughs> and some of the article, I said law when it should have been ill or whatever. But, you know, they understand you. Mm -hmm. And um, I, have to, I have to laugh at Pepino with his Google app. He would pull out his Google app and he would have a whole conversation with it, you know, mm -hmm. talking into it. And it was just so fun mm -hmm. the way he did that. And then he turned it around. It was always something hilarious. The man is wonderful. He makes me laugh so hard, mm -hmm. and um, it's it's awesome that he's your neighbor. But uh, I understand that that whole language thing it can be mm -hmm. quite upsetting initially, but yeah, it does it get is. better. It so. does. It, it's good. when we think back in the the four months we've been here, we've we've really acquired a, a much better vocabulary. Uh, you know, we we've got a long way to go, but but we can uh, we. Uh, we see progress. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was watching it at lunch, you know, the other day, and it looked like that you guys were understanding a lot, and that, yes. that comes first, and the yeah. speaking part comes later. Yes, but it's um, interesting how that happens. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. start to pick up on what people are saying, and you have to really be brave, and don't hold back trying to speak the language. Right. You have to try to use the words that you know. Yeah, exactly. And then they stick, and then you learn more. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a process. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay. We've, we've touched on this a little bit, but what have you learned from this whole process? I mean, it's a huge, life-changing process. What have you learned from it? I'm braver than I thought I was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Adventurous. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting. My sister, Carolyn, had traveled all over the world. And she lived overseas. She was an expat for 12 years um, back in the 80s and, and early 90s. And um, so she sort of knew what she was getting into, um, maybe a little bit better than, than I did, perhaps. But um, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm finding that I'm a little more courageous and, and willing to willing to step out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, there are still stresses, but uh, and I, I, there are days I get homesick, mm -hmm. and I really miss family and um, friends and, and my church. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, you know, that's tough. But, uh, but with all of the apps we have, do you, you can put an app on your phone and talk to your friends uh, via internet and it doesn't yeah. cost you anything. You know, I, I use that and, and, and stay in touch with, with people at home really fairly closely. And Facebook has been wonderful because I'm amazed at how interested people are in our little adventure. They're mm -hmm. sort of living vicariously through us. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that on your posts. And, and frankly, you know, when you started posting, Pete and I, when we're not here, well, all we do is think about this place, right? Like, when was that need down in Mecca? And to see, you know, what the weather's like, your walks with Ollie, you know, mm -hmm. um, the people that we love here, and to see them with you, mm -hmm. it, it just makes it, it makes it like we're a little bit closer. Tell us a little bit about the church. Now, Father Ernesto, who we met the other night, mm -hmm. who is a kick, we oh, love him. Um, tell us a little bit about that, because you have another church you go to in Batipaglia, mm -hmm. and but then you also go to church here. Mm -hmm. Well, we um, we decided that we wanted to really embrace the community, mm -hmm. and we felt that um, embracing their church and their religion was one way to do that, to show respect. Yeah. And so Carolyn and I made a decision we would start attending mass, and it was it was quite honestly the transportation for me to get to, to uh, Batavia yeah. was, was difficult because we didn't have a car at the time. And, uh, but we, we mostly just wanted to embrace the community. So we started going to church and we loved the Mass from the very first Sunday we started attending and uh, introduced ourselves to Father Ernesto. Well, actually, I take that back. We saw him in church. He didn't know we were there. 
but he had heard that two American women had moved to the village. Mm. And he, a few days later, <clears throat> he saw us in the piazza. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he came over, made a point to come over and introduce himself to us. And he was getting in the car and getting ready to go somewhere, but, but he stepped out of the car and ran over and introduced himself and said he wanted to, to, to meet with us later another time mm -hmm. and welcome us to the community. So we, um, so we just got to, to know him really well, and he's, he's a missionary. He calls himself a missionary, and he says, as missionaries, you're obligated to share what you have. Mm -hmm. And he knew about our transportation issues, and he offered to loan us his car. Wow. wow. <laughs> so, because the bus schedule did, doesn't always work too well. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes the bus, you miss the bus. We missed the bus one day <laughs> and getting back. So, um, but uh, so we took him up on his offer because we felt he was really genuine. Mm -hmm. And then one day we, we bought his car and then we went through some back alleyways that we've talked about are so small. And you have to put your side view mirrors in <laughs> because it's such a tight space. Yeah. And we went down this alley. We were gonna wanted to come the back way to because we had done a major shopping and we had all these supplies we needed to bring to the apartment. But we got this up this ramp and the car would not the ramp was so steep the car would not go up the ramp and so we got stuck. <laughs> I can so, so see that. Carolyn happen. had to go get Father Ernesto, <laughs> and he had to back the the car up the alley, uh, probably a hundred yards. <laughs> and there were a there was a Russian on his balcony who was seeing all this, and, <laughs> and he came out and he was trying to give us advice on how to get the car up the ramp. <laughs> And um, he was in his bathrobe at four in the afternoon, <laughs> and he said, "I would come and do it for you, but I'm sick." Oh, and then there was this Italian little Italian girl and her mother sitting on a on a door stoop, and uh, they watched Father Ernesto back the car up, and the little girl's going, "Bravo, Father Ernesto!" <laughs> and <laughs> applauding, and so so we all got a big laugh out of that. Oh, that was yeah, awesome. But, uh, that was a one, just one of our little adventures. But Father Ernesto has just been—he—he he is a missionary, and he yeah. is—he is an ambassador for, for the church and for just the, the Italians. And he's a wonderful man. He is a wonderful man. We we really enjoy. My son he was just like this with him after the dinner, you know, and making him laugh. And really, he just really thought he was a, a lovely man. So mm -hmm. that's very good. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I can totally see that happening with the car. <laughs> yeah, and, and he was very kind. He still let us borrow the car after that. But we, tell, we told him I was going to stay out of back alley. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably wise. You know, especially these ones. I mean, yeah. they, they can be, you know, fine and also straight up. Mm -hmm. And we actually had a situation where um, th this was in Scalia and it was raining and we went up one of those steep and the car just went, oh. and I was like, oh my gosh, what do you do with that? You know? It's scary. So, yeah. yeah, it's pretty scary. So, um, what are some of your stories? I mean, we see so many of them on Facebook, and I, I love reading your Facebook because there's always something exciting that happens, or something that you, you, you can tell us about. Now, you have two kittens in the wall out there. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that whole thing. I mean, we have a lot of feral cats in the village, yeah. um, and every time I pop in, those two are just so adorable, mm -hmm. looking out of the wall. Well. We have a history of animal rescue, and there are many feral cats, but a lot of them, though they don't belong to anyone, they're very socialized. Mm. And they, they'll let you pet, pick them up and pet them. Mm. And uh, so we, we um, decided to start feeding them. There's actually a couple, Cindy and um, Mike from, from Chicago, who own an apartment just around the corner. And when they come to visit, they bring bags and bags of cat food oh. and feed the cats. Okay. And uh, we got to know them, and we said we would we would take over in their their absence because they're only here a few weeks out of the year. Mm -hmm. So we started feeding the cats, and then I noticed one was pregnant, and then she had her kittens. I noticed when she had her kittens, and uh, she moved them to a wall, a hole in the wall just outside of my apartment because we had a lot of rain yeah. and they were getting getting wet and so she found a dry spot for them. But she had three and two died. Mm -hmm. But then we rescued one out of a ruin. Um, we kept hearing this other kitten cry just, just outside my door. So we got a ladder and we're going to climb into the ruin to, to rescue this kitten. And this, this sweet little girl from Michelle's niece, yeah. uh -huh. who visited him from uh, California, uh, Agnes, 
said she would go up into the ruin and because she was much younger and agile. Mm-hmm. So she climbed in there and was only in the ruin about 30 seconds and came out with the cat. Oh. And um, it had just been abandoned there. Mm. And um, this mother cat, we, Carolyn sat down on the stoop and this mother cat with the, that had lost two of her kittens walked up to Carolyn and snatched the kitten out of Carolyn's hands, ran to her hole in the wall and put the kitten in the hole in the wall, started bathing it and letting it nurse. Wow. Wow. So, is that the little white one that's in there? Or no, the, the smaller one. This okay. kitten is probably a week or so younger than, than her, her, wow. her litter. Okay. And um, and so we, but we named the kitten Agnes out of after Agnes, yeah. and and Agnes has a sister, Imogene. Uh, so we named the other kitten Imogene. Oh, okay. And uh, and the village, everybody is taking an interest in the kittens, and they stop by and ask and see check on and see how they're doing, and and they're they're just a little over a month old now. Wow. So wow. we're we're gonna try to find them a good home. Yeah, yeah, they're adorable. We yeah. popped our head in before we right as we got here. Wait, as soon as you're on your step ready to knock on your door, you look over and there's those two little faces. Yeah. Like, That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. And you put a nice crash pad because they're up high and yesterday I was just worried that they were gonna fall out, but you had put a crash pad down mm-hmm. below so that when they fall out they that's soft. It is. Which yeah. I thought was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it worked. We I saw Agnes fall out yesterday and oh. and she just bounced. Oh good. good. <laughs> that is a long drop for them. Yeah. So right, that's great. Right. It that's is great. So. Well, if somebody had planned to move here or somewhere in Italy or make a move like you did, which is a huge life changing, um, dream realizing move, mm-hmm. what would you tell them? Mm-hmm. I would say follow your heart. Mm-hmm. Um, if you if you really really feel like you want to do this, um, have courage. Know know that it's possible. Mm-hmm. And I now have I have, still have all my friends from home, but I've expanded my circle of friends. Mm-hmm. I I know people from all over the world now. Wow. And and that's a wonderful thing. To, that that you can make friends from people, friends with people from different cultures, mm-hmm. and learn from one another, and have lots of fun together. Mm-hmm. And I think that's been the most rewarding thing I've found is that um, all the the people I've met since I've been here, who I feel like I've really made friendships with, mm-hmm. you know, or at least beginning acquaintances on on the way to friendships. Yeah. And because this. Santa Dominica is a small town, but it's an international community. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's quite remarkable for a small village in southern Italy. Yeah. But um, it's, uh, it's very rewarding. And it's, you know, and, and follow your heart, and if you feel like you want to do it, then all things are possible. Yeah. Oh, that's a wonderful message. I love that. Well, thank you, Bonnie. This has been wonderful, um, educational for me. And I'm sure that um, a lot of people who follow you on Facebook or who follow our, our blog um, now have a lot of questions answered. And, and we'll see. Maybe we'll see some new faces in the village. Oh. There's a lot available here. And um, gosh, the, the villagers love it when, when we come and, and um, love their village as much as they do. Yes. They love this village with all their heart. And when we come and love it too, they, they really they get it. You know? mm-hmm. so, they do. You know, that's interesting. At a, um, a dinner we had, well, it was my birthday party actually, and all, all our Italian neighbors were invited. And um, they were telling Father Ernesto how much they loved the Americans. Mm. They really embraced the Americans. They uh, respect the Americans, and they feel like the Americans who come here are really interested in their community. Mm-hmm. And. Um, and I think they haven't forgotten World War II. They, <laughs> they sort of, uh, you know, um, embraced the fact that we were there. Um, um, we we fought with them, you know, to to, to for Italy, and uh, they love Americans. So, um, if you if you're an American thinking of moving to Italy, San Domenica is is a wonderful place to do that, mm-hmm. and be welcomed. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, thank you, Bonnie. This you're is welcome. wonderful. You're welcome.